Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sarah McKelvey. I am the Knowledge and Governance Officer at the Municipal Asset Management Program. And the, the program is offered by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and is funded by the Government of Canada. Before we get to the good stuff of today's webinar, I'll just highlight a few of the software features and, uh, and go over the structure of the webinar with you. So we've got three presentations lined up for you today from three different municipalities across Canada, and we encourage you to ask questions and engage in the discussion. We will have a dedicated time for a question and answer period following all three of the presentations. And at that point, I'll welcome you to ask questions using the Q&A feature in the WebEx, in the WebEx software. Uh, it should be on the right-hand side of the presentation that you can see on the screen. If the Q&A panel does not show up for you, um, all you have to do is click on, there's a, a menu at the bottom of your screen that should show up. And if you click on the three dots, it should come up with an option for the Q&A uh, feature. If you have any questions of clarification that arise during a particular presentation, please don't hesitate to ask them at that point, and we will try to answer those before moving on. Otherwise, we'll save the broader questions for after the presentations. I will note that while the presentations will be offered in English uh, during today's webinar, please feel free to refer to the presentation material that you should have received this morning from me by email. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, with the French presentation. We've currently got about 70 people on the line uh, tuned in right now, and our registration was at capacity quickly after launching the promotion of this event. So there are many people who reached out wishing to receive a recording following the live webinar. So as such, we will be recording today's webinar in order to share the presentations and discussion with those who could not attend. And we also anticipate publishing an accessible version of the recording with both English and French closed captions in the following week. If you're having uh, trouble hearing, please just feel free to, uh, to shoot us a message in the Q&A or the chat feature, and, uh, and we'll try to troubleshoot from there. Super. So without further ado, we'll get started. So as I mentioned, there's been a lot of interest in the content of this webinar, which I think speaks to a couple of things. Many municipalities are working at a similar stage in their asset management work, and many people appreciate learning from their peers about what works and what doesn't work. There are, are so many Canadians working on asset management in a number of different capacities, and there's no reason that anyone should be doing it alone. Whether you're working on bringing together a cross-functional asset management team, collecting asset condition data or communicating the importance of asset management to council members or the public, chances are a number of your peers have been there and have done just that. Through this webinar, we hope to connect you with the lessons that others have learned during their experiences, things that worked well, what they might do differently next time, so that you can learn from them as well and move forward in asset management in a more confident way with uh, some new perspectives. To briefly introduce the Municipal Asset Management Program, we are a program offered by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, as I mentioned. We are a five-year program consisting of two core components, capacity building and direct funding. The capacity building component of the program focuses on strengthening and enabling partner organizations who support municipalities in implementing asset management. The direct funding component offers grants of up to $50,000 to municipalities across Canada. By the end of the program, over 500 unique municipalities will have received a grant from the program. Municipalities ranging in population from over 1 million people to 40 people. Approximately 60% of the funding that has been allocated to date has been to municipalities with a population of under 5,000. Grant recipients continue to work on projects ranging in focus from asset management plans, policies, and strategies to data collection and reporting to data, uh, sorry, to asset management systems assessments to training and organizational development. The majority of grant recipients are working in more than one of those areas at a time. As the administrator of the grant funding, we are able to keep a finger on the pulse of the activities that municipalities are working on. 
We require each grant recipient to submit a final report at the end of their one-year project, which gives us the opportunity to better understand how far a municipality has come after undertaking the work, what were some of the barriers they encountered, and uh, what worked well for them, what kinds of support they will need to keep moving the dial. After doing some preliminary analysis on what municipalities were saying, we were able to see some common threads come through. Namely, that staff and council engagement is critical, as is ensuring that an asset management team engages staff across multiple departments and service areas. In many cases, external support is absolutely necessary and is most effective when it's offered in a way that enables in-house staff to have the tools to sustain the progress. And also, asset management is not a single step, short-term commitment. It takes more time, more energy, and more staff resourcing than many municipalities had anticipated. So this brings me to our three guest speakers today. Each of the people you'll hear from today received a grant from the Municipal Asset Management Program and through their work experienced firsthand the challenges and opportunities of various asset management activities. Marco Degle is the treasurer for the City of Edmonston, New Brunswick, and will be speaking to his experience implementing a GIS system and the importance of engaging employees and council and the value of having a cross-functional asset management team, among other successful components. Kelly Watkins is the treasurer of the township of North Frontenac, Ontario, and will be speaking to her experience undertaking condition assessments while working with a consultant and dedicated staff and garnering employee engagement. Hillary Elliott is the Chief Administrative Officer of the Village of Silverton, British Columbia, and will be speaking to the asset inventory and preliminary state of infrastructure reports that the town undertook and how time and resource constraints played into the project. So I'm just going to pass over the controls to Marco, who will get started on his presentation. Just give it one second, Marco. It should be all yours. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Edmonston is located in the, the, the northern part of uh, New Brunswick. We have about 17,000 uh, people uh, in, the, in the city. And um, our experience uh, before we received the grant, uh, we had limited knowledge of uh, asset management. We had some basic training. Uh, we met an expert on asset management who told us basically to start working on our own policy and to get support from the council, which we did at the beginning. And we were mainly at uh, level one on, uh, uh, on the scale of the competencies. Um, our project was to implement a geographic information system, which I will call GIS for the purpose of the presentation. Um, so uh, basically what we uh, wanted to, uh, to do was to develop an assessment tool uh, to properly manage our roads uh, assets and to incorporate it into our plan. Uh, we also implemented a GIS web portal for our managers to better ac access uh, the, the data. And of course, we had a GIS structure in the municipality, but uh, it needed a major update uh, before we, or at the beginning of the, of the project. Um, we use uh, as a starting point um, the provincial database uh, to build our database uh, for the roads. Uh, mostly, and we hired at that time, um, well, at the begin beginning of the, pro uh, the project, uh, we hired the GIS resources uh, as we established that our AMP uh, would need to go through a GIS platform. And um, it's hard to see on the picture, but uh, we created three categories uh, to evaluate and prior prioritize our roads. And um, we've done it with the help of uh, uh, a software called Total Pave, uh, which uh, we had to drove our roads, and it gave us a score based on the roughness of, uh, of each road. And we were able then to, uh, to come up with uh, some categories. Uh, this is basically the scope of the project we had with uh, the FCM. Like I mentioned, we were at uh, level one mostly on uh, uh, each competencies, and at the end of the uh, of the project, we were able to go up to a level two and level three uh, at the end of the project. 
the uh, the first opportunities or first steps we've uh, we've gone through um, we had at the beginning a very uh, strong commitment uh, with our council at the beginning of uh, his second mandate uh, the mayor created a few committees uh, with the community members and the asset management was one of them uh, we uh, we put together an internal team so the work could get done uh, uh, to uh, to be able to bring something to uh, uh, to the committee uh, on uh, on a monthly uh, basis. Um, we also had the training from uh, the Francophone Association of Municipalities in New Brunswick, AIM Network, and FCM. We've done a lot of analysis of existing uh, policies, and uh, we've done a lot of researchers uh, that led us to our very first uh, asset management policy. And uh, that's mostly it for the beginning. The committee was, um, uh, we had uh, uh, city council members on the committee. We also had a community uh, representative um, who were interested with the idea of improving a long-term asset management for uh, the municipality. And we had an, an internal team. Um, we had account the accounting team, the engineering team, and the GIS uh, coordinator um, as well. That internal team that I just uh, mentioned, uh, we had bi-weekly meetings. We were very uh, disciplined in order to get through the, uh, the, um, the uh, amount of work we had to deal with. Um, we had in-house work sessions, researchers, and training. Uh, and we've done, uh, again, analyze, uh, some analysis on other municipalities' management plan. After we've done the policy, we, we uh, pull out some uh, others, a municipality, uh, asset management plan, and we uh, we start sort, sorting that out. Um, while building our databases, we had to understand what was the province expectation. Uh, I have to mention that asset management is mandatory in New Brunswick, but uh, we had uh, basic guidelines from uh, from the province. Um, but other than that, uh, other than the minimum uh, minimal requirements, we had to establish our parameters as we go for four types of infrastructure infrastructure, uh, which, which were um, the road pavements, uh, the waste water pipes, the storm water pipes, uh, water supply pipes. And the logic behind was uh, before resurfacing any roads, you should make sure that your pipes are in good shape kind of thing. So that's where we started. And we also, I also use the uh, the PSAB inventory that I've done back in 2012 and 13 uh, for the accounting uh, uh, public sector, and we use that as a starting point. We all we we had listed all the uh, uh, the assets that we have at that time, so we started from that list to build up our database uh, for asset management. Um, our first conclusion was: whatever the assets you are studying you need to define five things in order to get an accurate plan uh, for your asset. Uh, you need to define uh, the age of uh, your asset. Uh, for example, it has 10, 15 years. The life cycle of it, it can last 20, 25 years. The degradation curve, uh, it, uh, it is in good shape, for example, until 15 years, then it drops dramatically after, afterwards. Uh, condition assessment, it is a condition two at this moment, blah, blah, blah and replacement costs, or the cost per cycles, it costs so many dollars every 20, 20 25 years. The chart at the bottom shows uh, the, uh, it's a high level summary that we, we came up with uh, for our uh, four core assets that we've studied during the last year. Uh, the conditions, one being excellent and five being critic or very bad. And the chart shows us that uh, um, we, we would need roughly uh, between three and four million just to fix our condition five right at this moment, uh, based on the on the four uh, asset uh, classes. And then another uh, major uh, conclusion that we find was, uh, for instance, the transportation assets are about 40% of our total assets, and within that transportation group the roads are about 80% of it. So by concentrating uh, the effort on roads, you can tackle about a third of your total assets. 
uh, if we put it as as an average. That's what we found for our uh, our assets. So that was one of the reasons we started with uh, with the road. Um, as conclusion, asset management is a team effort. Uh, I've mentioned it. Uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago. It's a continuous process that allows uh, for in informed decision making. Uh, we started with that, those four core assets, but we know there's a lot, uh, still a lot to do, uh, buildings, the vehicle, the AV equipment, and so on. So uh, it's, uh, it's a big, uh, uh, big project. This is a process that requires support of the council and management, which we had right at the beginning. And uh, we wanted to uh, to do it by ourselves for ourselves, so that's the the reason why we we came up with uh, with an internal team and try to work uh, to work on it. Uh, we had uh, meetings every two weeks, so we need, needed rigor and discipline in order to achieve our first uh, plan. Uh, and we started with accounting data, but we think now the asset management is or will be a process of its own eventually compared to a to be a sub process uh, within the accounting department if i can say it that, that way and it is something that will take a couple of years to achieve and will probably be an ongoing process uh, afterwards great thank you very much Marco. i really appreciate your presentation and your insights um, and, and sharing your experiences um, I'm going to pass over the controls to Kelly Watkins to, uh, to keep rolling with her presentation. Coming over to you now, Kelly, you should have it. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to start my presentation, just to give you a little bit about North Frontenac. So the North, Township of North Frontenac is home to approximately 1,800 permanent and 7,000 seasonal residents. The township spans 1,164 square kilometers of unique landscape located entirely on the Canadian Shield, of which 70% is Crown land. North Frontenac is a lower tier municipality located in the county of Frontenac and in the heart of eastern Ontario's cottage country. The municipality operates a collection of 184 backcountry campsites, most accessible by water only, through a mem memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry as the campsites are located on Crown land. North Frontenac also has the darkest skies in eastern and southern Ontario. Our designated dark sky preserve by the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada is the first municipal dark sky preserve in Canada. So some of our assets include 181 kilometers of paved surface treatment roads, 158 kilometers of gravel roads, four fire halls, five community halls, a newly renovated municipal office, three public works garages, one shared with the municipal office, 16 bridges, 11 culverts over three meters, four waste sites, two transfer stations, and multiple outdoor recreation facilities. In 2017, we applied to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for funding through the Municipal Asset Management Program to complete a building condition assessment on our buildings. Once approved, we issued a request for proposal to complete a detailed visual building condition assessment on 20 of our municipal buildings. In the RFP, we asked them to look at sites and grounds, structural and foundation systems, roofing systems, exterior enclosures, mechanical systems, interior systems, building and fire code issues, accessibility compliance, capacity, renewal and replacement strategies, upgrades to existing components, and update our current floor plans. Once the visual assessments were completed, the results came back to us in a final report that included recommendations of what needs to be repaired, replaced, or upgraded immediately to conform to industry standards. The estimate of the lifespan of the building elements and systems and the list of recommendations for repair or replacement with estimated costs and a recommended prioritization of repairs, including a 10-year capital improvement plan. The RFP we issued received seven responses with the prices ranging from $35,000 to $242,000. So as you'll see, the prices vary significantly. North Frontenac awarded the project to McIntosh & Perry based on a scoring matrix in the amount of $37,000. 
As a result of the completed building condition assessment, we were able to increase our readiness scale for data and information from a two at the start of the project to a three once the project was completed, as buildings were the last major item that we needed to incorporate into our asset management plan. Prior to the building condition assessment, we had updated studies on other assets, such as paved surface treatment roads, gravel roads, and bridges and culverts, which we also used consultants to complete. We are a small rural municipality, so with the FCM grant, we were able to hire a consultant that had the expertise to review the condition of our buildings and its components, as we do not have staff on site with this type of expertise to complete such an evaluation. We included all applicable staff in the assessment process, not just the managers. Staff and managers went with the consultant to each building during the on-site assessments. This gave the staff a better understanding of the building condition assessment process and the needs for each facility. By including the staff, we were able to provide the consultant with additional information, such as known issues or concerns. The final documents provided us with the information we needed to include capital improvements into our 10-year tangible capital asset management plan, as well as to incorporate operating maintenance activities that we can plan for in advance. This was achieved by the management team meeting and going through the 10-year plan together to identify what was capital and what is operating. We then looked at similar projects that are within a year or so of each other to see if we can move them to be in the same year where we may have opportunity to reduce costs. With all projects come challenges. Our challenges were all about timing. Our first challenge we ran into was the time of year. We had issued and awarded the project late in the year and a few days before the on-site visit, everything was covered in a blanket of snow. This made it difficult for the consultant to get a detailed look at items such as pavement. The second challenge was the amount of time allocated to the on-site visits. This was completed in one and a half days for 20 facilities. Even though we got the information we requested, we felt a little more time could have been allocated to this process. And the third challenge was requesting a short turnaround time between the completion of the on-site assessments to when we expected to receive the finalized reports back to allow time for discussions between the consultant and managers. So in conclusion, as a small municipality, we found the building condition assessment that was made possible with the approved grant from the FCM was an excellent way for us to obtain the information we needed to continue to maintain, repair our municipal buildings. North Frontenac has always been very fortunate to have a staff and council, council that understands the importance of this type of information for our long-term sustainability. <clears throat> a summary of the report was presented to council by the consultant in 2018. 2019 will be the first year that we are incorporating this information into our budget to really understand the impact short and long-term. This will be presented to council in the next couple of weeks. As we've learned early on, the asset management plan is not just a treasury function. Therefore, council and staff will review the building condition assessment report annually to update and review the financial impact to maintain and operate all of our buildings. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much, Kelly. I really appreciate your presentation and your insights as well. Uh, we will uh, move on to Hillary's presentation now, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A after that. And Hillary, I'm just passing over the controls now. You should have them now. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, everyone. Silverton, BC is located in the southeastern part of the province in the Kootenays. It's about a 700-kilometer drive to Vancouver and about 550-kilometer drive to Calgary. And we're just a couple hours' drive to the U.S. border in Washington. We have a population of 195 with two public works staff and two office staff. Our summer population is significantly higher with the arrival of tourists and part-time residents. Staff and council had a limited and disjointed experience with asset management before receiving the grant. It was mostly driven by high need or reactionary decision-making rather than an asset management plan based on knowledge with specific data of the state of assets, asset life expectancy, and long-term financial plans. Plans usually focused on an asset in isolation from other assets with limited knowledge of the general state of all assets. This often resulted in scrambling for information when appropriate funding was available for other assets 
that had not been allocated as a high priority in that specific year. It also created a huge to-do list of options for staff in terms of funding each year without the highest priorities of council necessarily being addressed due to lack of funding needed to finance the capital project or consensus on what the high priorities were that needed addressing between elected officials, the public, and staff due to lack of specific data and knowledge regarding assets. Adding to the challenges was the lack of knowledge of where some of our assets were in terms of mapping and precise knowledge of works underground, sometimes creating disjointed knowledge and communications between public work staff and office staff. Where precisely is the closest water main valve or fire hydrant for signing a new home address, due to old paper maps not necessarily updated appropriately. We now have better under sorry. We now have a better understanding of condition and location of assets with GPS, allocation of assets, prioritizing in specific categories such as water lines, roads with color coding digital map and a digital map of the community with layers of assets and the ability to add layers and update. This gave us a readiness level with a digital capture of fixed assets that is easy to add, transfer, and update information. A preliminary condition captured for all assets, this is a phased approach which I will discuss later, and a preliminary state of infrastructure reports which included one, replacement cost, two, annual reserve, three, condition, and four projected expenditures that allows for financial plans of one to five and six to ten years. Consultants, in partnership with other small communities, created a mapping program with GIS that was developed based on digital data for a preliminary state of assets. What do we own? What is it worth? This is a municipal specific desktop GIS program installed on all staff computers with the information gathered and the ability to update information easily when assets are replaced, deteriorate, change, or are added. Challenge. We have a limited number of staff, limited financial resources, and limited expertise. Note a planning department, engineers, or financial department. Opportunity. With the consultants, we created a phased approach with other municipalities to, create, to complete a comprehensive asset management plan using a GIS program that works as an assessment, planning, and measuring tool all in one. Challenge. There is limited time and staff in order to update information as works are completed or new information arises. The opportunity to have a unique GIS program for data collection that includes in the field technology such as a tablet, for accurate and real-time updates with GPS that is accessible to all staff for appropriate data according to needs, whether it be public works or office, for planning and to allocate staff time needed to complete projects and financial funding planning. The assessment and data collected are then part of a long-term financial plan with implementation to help coordinate with other partners such as other local governments as well as other orders of governments for funding opportunities. Challenge. Okay, we have information for roads and water infrastructure. Now what? How can we afford to do this? Well, the opportunity. Working with the province and local municipalities can help realize cost efficiencies with a phased approach to asset management planning. The plan created and the data collected as part of the long-term financial plan is used for implementation to help coordinate with other partners, such as other local governments for cost efficiencies, as well as other orders of government for funding opportunities. For example, when the province was paving the highway through our community, we planned paving work with the other two local governments nearby while also completing water line upgrades and sidewalk replacement while the infrastructure was being disturbed. Limited funding for asset management implementation. Community. By working with provincial entities like UBCM and BC with FCM, Appropriate funding opportunities can be made available, especially for small, rural, and remote communities such as us. Some suggested ponderings for our peers. By implementing a policy, this ensures asset management is a necessary and supported corporate function. Using a phased approach for asset management creation and ongoing updates helps to spread out the cost, making it more financially viable when there are limited funds and capacity. 
we use the following three categories. In our first year, asset inventory, the second, which is now asset prioritization, and next year we hope to do operational and capital strategies. We have utilized the information from the Asset Management Plan to prioritize infrastructure funding over a five to 10 year financial plan, which allows for a phased approach based on data and is less financially daunting and reduces reactionary and unknown costs within a single budget. Communications with both staff and elected officials with other local governments helps to utilize cost efficiencies for plans and execution, as we did with the paving project as previously mentioned. Partnering with a college or local government might be possible for the GIS creation and updates to digitally identify and update assets, with asset and data layers all in one place, roads, water, sewer, hydrants, building sidewalks, water runoff drainage, future planning, tree inventory, natural assets. Try to use the opportunities to do as much work as possible with one project based on the asset plan priorities. For example, we targeted the area with the most work needed immediately in the plan for water lines, sidewalks, and roads all at once. Political communication through entities such as UBCM here in BC and FCM for funding opportunities can help support this type of phased approach. Working with a consultant that is willing to work with other small communities with one grant or partnership, yet still creating unique data, digital data and information that is vital for each community can help with cost efficiencies. By using a phased approach in developing your asset management plan, not only are expenses spread out over more than one budget year, the consultant can help refresh staff or train new staff on software, as well as help update with the raw data collected more efficiently and effectively on the software that staff may be less proficient or knowledgeable of. I hope this presentation might lead to some ideas for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hillary. Really appreciate your presentation um, and your insights. At this point, we are uh, ready to open up the floor to, uh, to questions from participants. Um, using the Q&A section of your, of your screen. We'll try to get to all of the questions. However, if any are missed, I welcome you to reach out to myself for follow-up and I can connect you with the appropriate, um, with the appropriate individual. Um, I know we have had a question about um, the possibility for our, our panelists to share um, some of the outputs mentioned in your presentations, things like the PSAB inventory or condition ratings. And uh, I don't know if anyone, if, if any of our panelists would feel comfortable sharing those things or if you know of um, any, any templates available um, that, that might be helpful in that situation. Uh, Sarah, this is Marco. Hi. I've mentioned that uh, AIM Network uh, we, we, it was a partner with us. Uh, they offer, uh, it's a free spreadsheet which we use for our first uh, asset management plan. So uh, we, uh, we were able to upload our inventory into this and that so Excel software generated the, the quick summary that I showed on my presentation. It's uh, an example that could be, uh, could be maybe uh, used by other municipalities. Okay, terrific. So maybe what I'll do, if you're able to send me um, uh, the link to it or information on how to access that, then I can send out, along with the recording and, and any other resources that come out of this conversation, I can send those to all participants um, or for their reference as well. Is that okay with you? Yeah, certainly, yeah. Super, thanks so much. Any other comments, uh, Hillary or Kelly, on any of any templates available to, to get the information that you were able to obtain from your project? Uh, this is Kelly. I don't have a template, but we will be posting all of our building condition assessments on our website probably in the next month once we've reviewed with Council for Budget. Um, so if you check back in about a month on the North Frontenac website, you will see our building condition assessments and be able to see what information we obtained. Terrific. In terms Great. of Silverton, we're still sort of in that second phase and most of the data is still in the GIS, so it would be more of a snapshot showing how we we're able to color code, I guess, the different levels mm. for our infrastructure that we've completed. So I can certainly pass along um, some information as well as the consultant uh, name that we worked with and that might be helpful. 
Super. Thank you so much. That would be great. That would be great if you want to just follow up after, and, and I'll, uh, I'll share that information with all of the participants in a, an easy to sort of obtain kind of way. Um, another question that came in, can any of the panelists comment on the ongoing funding options uh, that their uh, councils, elected officials, have um, opted to go with, for example, direct tax support, infrastructure levies, user fees, that kind of thing. Maybe, uh, Mako, if you have any, um, any suggestions on that front, we can start with you. Sure. Uh, if anybody has any suggestion, I'll take it because we don't have any <laughs> we don't have any solution uh, at this moment uh, about funding. Uh, we know it's over. Uh, uh, it's all, it's under fund for sure uh, for every uh, every asset uh, uh, asset uh, component. But uh, what we we think we're going to do is we're going to need to based on the. the the condition four and five that is coming, maybe try to uh, to finance on the same proportion of the condition five, for example, for each. Uh, so, for example, if you have a, uh, a deficit of 10 million and you have funds for three, well, we'll spend the three million based on uh, weighted average for each category. That's one one of example that came up to my mind. Uh, and we, I shared I shared it with uh, with the council a couple of months ago. But uh, for now, it's a big uh, for us. It's a big uh, big challenge for sure. Mm. Fair enough. Um, uh, Kelly, any any additions on that front? Uh, I think we're probably a similar situation. Um, so we've had our capital asset plan for a number of years, but it was roads and vehicles and didn't include buildings. So those are the tough discussions coming up with our budget meeting in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. on how we are going to fund this over the next 10 years. Absolutely. And uh, Hillary, anything else to add on, on that front, on that conversation? Yeah, I think that was sort of alluded to in my presentation mm -hmm. as well is by having that asset management plan and understanding what infrastructure is needed, then you go to your provincial and federal funders and see what um, what their priorities are for the next one to three years and try to make sure that you've got that information shovel ready so that um, when that funding does come through that you are ready. Other than that, it is, yeah, it's, it's tricky. Mm -hmm. Maybe just uh, dovetailing on that conversation, any suggestions on uh, communication to council? Um, sorry, just reading, just reading the question. Um, able to, uh, so this individual is able to complete condition assessments on roads, water, sanitary, and facilities. Um, but issues with uh, sort of council approving and uh, the appropriate funding. Any suggestions on how to approach council about um, about those sorts of things? Maybe we'll, we'll go in the same order, Mako, if you want to start. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand correctly the question, but uh, for us, what we're going through is uh, we are trying to uh, prioritize the road that needs to be uh, repaved, uh, and we we need to consider what are the uh, the condition of the, the pipes underneath. So that's how we we know there's a there's a, uh, a war that needs to uh, to to be a uh, pavement needs to be redone. But we know we have to uh, to work on the pipes underneath. So we we know for sure we won't be able to go this to go there uh, this year or, or next year. So that's the kind of reasoning you need to to bring up with uh, with your plan as you go with. Mm -hmm. When you bring it forward to council. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kelly, anything to elaborate on that? Um, I think we're just, again, we're still in the initial stages of absorbing all of the information. Um, again, in a couple of weeks, it'll be going to council to look at, and I think they're going to have to look and make some hard decisions as to, you know, whether we can maintain everything that we have or, or look at service levels so that starts bringing in, you know, those other parts of the asset management plan that talks about service levels and where we're at and possibly setting a policy. So those are all works to be done coming ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Uh, Hillary, anything to add on, on that topic as well? Yes, I just had a few thoughts and I'm trying to <laughs> bring them back. So, um, so our first initial um, sort of asset inventory, we focused on our water lines and our roads because we're a small municipality. We, you know, we have a few community buildings, but we don't necessarily we have two vehicles that we, <laughs> so you know, we don't have those huge numbers. So luckily, um, all of the roads were colored either red, so that means you know we needed to get on them uh, based on their condition, whether they're crumbling or whatnot. And then there was a layer of the water lines, which were red, um, needed to be done now. Then you do orange, which is in the one to three, and then you do um, yellow and progressives like that. So part of that is to understand, okay, those are the, the reds, the worst condition. Often we have comments from the public that we can present to council stating uh, complaints about certain potholes or deterioration of the roads. Uh, or concerns, and so we can couple that with the actual data of assessment that we're, you know, these are the things that are deteriorating, uh, as well as that five, one to five and five year, uh, five to ten year financial plan with those capital projects allocated really helps to communicate to council over a period of time so that mentally they know in five years we need a million dollars to do these sections of our community in order to upkeep our infrastructure. So part of that conversation with asset management is, is that future dialogue of, of what's happening so things aren't just always about th this year, it's about, oh, and by the way, in three years we're going to need this. In BC, we have gas tax um, money that we can utilize that we're given to as communities that can help, because um, obviously with 195 people and only about 200 houses, there's not a lot of taxation. So we can plan to try and do smaller projects if that's what is, is needed. Um, I'm not sure if that helps with the, the larger communities with a lot, a lot more road, but uh, it helps us sort of to plan and say, okay, in, in so many years we'll have this amount, and whatever we can then get funding for above and beyond that will allow us to elaborate on, on those high needs. Those are great points. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I certainly appreciate the point of, of always keeping sort of the next um, hurdle or the next task or project sort of in the in the background of, of elected officials' minds to know that, you know, it's not a, a one and done kind of process, this asset management. Um, maybe uh, sort of switching gears a little bit, uh, we had one question about how how did you approach recruitment of uh, community members? This was specifically for Mako who had the uh, inter um, or the cross functional uh, asset management team. Um, of, yeah, how you um, approach recruitment of community members for your committee, and uh, do committee members help the committee and then council determines the levels of service, or is there a different structure to, to your approach? Yeah, uh, the, um, the the council and the mayor, the, uh, they wanted to increase the uh, uh, public engagement in the municipality, so uh, they launched a, a couple of uh, strategic committees uh, at the beginning of this last mandate, uh, like three years ago, and uh, asset management was one, was one of them. And at a public meeting, the mayor stated it that he, he, he would he would put in place a few committees and would seek for participation of any any uh, citizen who would be interested in uh, in uh, giving uh, their feedback and participating in that uh, that kind of committee. So that's how we started, and the names just just came in as as we go, uh, and uh, uh, that's mostly it. The level of service they will it will uh, always remain uh, to the council, and but uh, we were able to have good discussion. And the the first part of the committee was to uh, to um, to build and to to bring uh, the, our first um, uh, admin policy on asset management. So that's how it's, it started, and that's where their uh, partic participation was uh, was uh, requested at the beginning, I guess. That's great, thank you. Um, and uh, Hillary and Kelly, um, I, you, you haven't quite elaborated on, on I guess, sort of if you have a committee or who all is working um, on your your asset management program, or, or how you involve the public 
um, in those matters. But if you want to elaborate on, on your approach for that so far, uh, that, would be, that would be insightful, I think. Um, Kelly, do you want to start? Sure. So uh, what we've done is all of the managers are involved. So even if there's some webinars and online training, we've included all the managers to attend that training. Again, to take it away from that, it's just a treasury function that we need everybody's input um, and to work together, again, because we're small. Um, so collaborative always works better. Uh, we've also sent some counsel to some asset management training as well, just to keep them up to date and what's going on and what the requirements are and, and what challenges we have ahead. Uh, we haven't engaged the public as yet. Uh, we are looking at you know possible ways through uh, questionnaires or something to do that, but uh, we haven't uh, engaged the public at this point. Okay, fair enough, thank you. And Hillary? Well, with a staff of four, we're, we, we chat all the time, so it's <laughs> for us. Um, and uh, in terms of council, being a small community, I, I, you know, I meet weekly with the mayor, and, and so we have a great rapport in terms of uh, giving that information, and then he helps with that leadership in terms of when we have budget discussions. Just having an election, we've got two new council members, so uh, this will be interesting, uh, also being the new CAO, uh, this will be my first time doing that, so I can't really elaborate on that. And being a small community, often it is us responding to phone calls or people that come in, so it has been very ad hoc or or by request or demand, um, rather than going out to do a community process. So uh, that might be because we're smaller, or maybe we just haven't organized a larger discussion because we're still sort of, you know, in the middle of it. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going through some of the other questions that we're receiving uh, through WebEx. Um, one question, how detailed was the infrastructure plan going forward to establish the plan? Was it based on public works data or engineering studies? I have a feeling that that is directed towards um, Hillary, but I could be wrong, or a combination of both. Is it ringing a bell to, uh, to anyone Me? on the line? Hillary? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, for us, it was uh, predominant, we, predominantly public works, and so it is essentially done in-house, but it was had some out, outside help in terms of um, we've had engineers come in and do some work for us for other things, and so during that time, staff and, uh, are working with those professionals, and so it is predominantly uh, in-house with our public works staff. Uh, however, we've sort of got managed to get sort of that outside and, and other professional help as well. Uh, and when we dig up uh, dig up any of our infrastructure, then we do try to take pictures and, and see see what's there. So again, it's it's more staff oriented at this point for us. We just don't really have the capacity or the financing to be able to bring in uh, other professionals all the time to do that. Okay, thanks very much. If um uh, I believe Charlene asked the question. If um, if that doesn't answer your question, just let me know and we can try to uh, um, uh, hammer it down a little bit. Uh, one of the other questions that we've received, would it be possible to know more details about your use of a GIS and, if appropriate, a CMMS and their connection with other softwares in your organization? I know a few of you have mentioned the uh, uh, your work with using GIS and uh, Sounds like there's some, some appetite to learn a little bit more. Marco, if you would like to start on that one. Yeah, I forgot to mention that I have very limited uh, knowledge about G, about GIS, so, <laughs> so bear with me. But um, for us, the main goal is to uh, to bring another um, uh, another um, level of uh, of support to managers and uh, and operators on on the field. For example, we want to be able to uh, to identify the valves in the in the streets or in the uh, the property, so when it's time to fix them, the uh, the operators don't don't have to uh, to to search for them. They know exactly where it is when they have a call or they have a, have a 
uh, a leak or something like that. So that's the kind of views we want to go with uh, the, the GIS. And other than that, we want to be able to, as 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 long, and we want to connect that GIS with uh, the uh, the uh, preventive maintenance eventually. So if we get a request from a citizen that this is this thing is broken and we go fix it and it was a condition four, for example, we want to be able to to uh, to change it to a condition one or two and then roll it up into our asset management plan so we don't have to go manually to update it uh, year after year. It'll be done for a couple of years if you don't touch it uh, for, for a while. I don't know if I answered the question correctly. If not, I can provide Sarah, the, uh, our GIS uh, guy here is a guru uh, with that and a very good resource for us. So I'm sure he can, he can help you out with that. Super. Thanks very much, Malco. Um, uh, Kelly, would you, oh, that was great. Thank you. That was the, the response. Um, any other information to add on that, Kelly or Hillary? I don't have anything else. No, okay. So, um, Sorry, I, I, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, so for us, one of the, as Marco was saying, the precise location with the GPS and GIS working together is a great asset, as well as having that uh, tablet that can go out in the field so that, um, you know, real time and real information is, is collected, as well as saving time for staff because it's just, right there and you can upload and, and get that information. Uh, using old maps, we found that all that infrastructure wasn't necessarily documented well. And so the GIS mapping not only has the ability to create all the color-coded areas for assessing you know, what stage of deterioration your infrastructure is in, but also uh, you can create, just like you do with the maps, you can create the little bubbles and put in sort of text and information that might be pertinent uh, for your community and your staff to utilize. So uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, answering the question all that well, but I just find that the GIS is very user-friendly, user very visually easy to understand, and um, saves a lot of time because it's something that you can also share with professionals in order to help them understand what it is that you need done. So it's, it's a great communication tool, uh, both for internal and external. Um, and Sarah, there was one thing that I did think about for in terms of the assessment of uh, roads mm -hmm. and buildings uh, by professionals. One of the challenges that a couple of the communities came across was when we went to resurface our roads uh, without uh, knowing what's underneath in terms of um, whether your uh, base for your road is needing to be redone as well as just the resurfacing, you can get some major cost changes that uh, if your surface isn't well enough to just be paved on top of, so that created some issues. And of course, when you're taking apart a building that you're renovating, you never know it's there. So just some cautionary things of what you might be able to get professionals to look at specifically for you. That's great, very helpful, thank you so much. Um, so we are uh, getting close to the top of the hour, so I am um, just going to wrap up with a, a few other um, sort of last minute points. Um, before signing off, just a, a couple of final notes. So for more information on asset management resources or resources for beginners, getting started in asset management, and many other guides and tools produced by uh, the municipal asset, Pro uh, municipal asset Management Program and our partners, I welcome you to visit FCM's website, which is linked above to our, our, um, our program resources webpage and uh, a number of resources that have been mentioned in the presentation will be referenced there as well. And if you'd like to stay in the loop about upcoming webinars and training opportunities, I would also welcome you to subscribe to FCM Connect, which is our um, uh, FCM's e-newsletter, and it'll let you know about workshops and events and, and things coming up. And uh, just as a, a final note, I wanted to extend a, a very, very big thank you to uh, Marco, Kelly, and Hillary for volunteering your time to participate in this webinar and for sharing your experiences and, and your lessons learned. And uh, a big thank you to everyone on the call for your interest in this topic and for your attention. And uh, I wish everyone a wonderful day and the rest of your week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.